What's up guys, GT here. In this video, we'll be talking about what exactly scenes are, how to create them, and how to use them in a real life situation. So the first question you obviously have is, what really are scenes? Now to explain this better, let's take a real life scenario where you are part of a heavy metal band, let's say, and you're the only guitar player in the band, and your duties in a particular track is to shell out four different tones from the Axe FX2, the first one being a clean tone, the second one being a clean ambient sort of a tone, the third one being a high gain distortion tone, and the fourth one being a high gain lead sort of a tone. Now, that's where the scenes can really help you to encapsulate all four of those, these tones in a single preset. Now, the next question you might obviously have is, why do I need scenes for that, right? You can obviously do that with these presets, but soon you'll be running out of, you know, user banks. But that's the, that's a very minor thing. The more important benefit of using scenes is the seamless switching between scenes and seamless switching between the sounds that you have. Now, if you've ever used the Axe FX2 in a live situation and you have switched between presets, you will notice that there is a small gap in between the sounds of the preset number A and preset number B you're switching to. And that happens for a specific reason. And that's the reason scenes have been created to allow that seamless switching. Let me explain it better. When it comes to a preset, every preset has a grid. Let's just call this the grid or the signal chain. Now, when you load a preset, what the Axe FX2 is doing is it's initializing each of these blocks and the entire grid into its memory. And when you switch between scenes, what's happening is that it's not having to reinitialize the entire grid because it's already got all of the blocks, whether it's bypassed or not bypassed into its memory. And all it's doing is quickly jumping between the different sounds. But when you're switching presets, what's happening is that it has to reinitialize the grid every time uh, you're basically jumping from preset A to preset B or back. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions in the in the comments. You can read about this more in the Axe Fix 2 user manual as well. So. We're looking to create four different scenes in this video. The first one being a clean sort of a scene. The second one being a clean ambient sort of a scene. The third one being a high gain distortion scene. And the fourth one being a high gain distortion lead tone as well. Now, if you're an Axe FX3 user, there's a ton of more things you can do by using channels as well. The Axe FX2 doesn't have that. Uh, other things like you can have different names for different scenes. The Axe FX2 does not have that as well. So each scene will still have the same name as your preset, but that's okay to live by for now. Let's go ahead and start creating the scene. So I've got the first scene already created for you. This is a clean sort of a scene. Uh, the settings that I'm gonna be using are not gonna be important. So I'm gonna be quickly, you know, scrubbing through the settings so that you can see what I've used. The amp is a shiver clean. The cab is basically a basket weave cab. I've got some chorus in there and I've got some reverb in there. This is how the preset sounds at the moment. Very DC sounding preset. Uh, so let's go ahead and start creating scene number two. Now, a couple of important things to remember while creating scenes is that whatever blocks you add in any scene are going to be present in all the other scenes. It is not possible to have a particular block in scene one and not have it in scene two. It's either going to be bypassed or enabled, but it cannot be deleted in any of the scenes. So similarly, uh, whatever settings you change in one particular scene for a particular block will carry forward to all different scenes as well. So you gotta be careful. So let's say I push the input drive in scene one for amp one over here, it's gonna carry forward to all the different scenes. But there are ways to actually have two different settings for a particular amp between two scenes as well, and I'll show that as well or for any block as well. Most of the blocks offer this capability as well. So it's called the XY mode. So while creating scene two, let's go ahead, jump to scene two. Let's create scene two, which is the ambient sort of a preset I was talking about. Now in this case, I want a different reverb in here in parallel, right? I wanna connect it over here. And I'm just gonna speed ramp this so that you can see what I'm doing here.
Also, what I want to do is change the chorus to Y mode. Now, what is X and Y mode? X and Y mode allows you to have two different settings of the same block in a different scene. So in scene one, I had chorus as an X setting, but let's say I want to use the same chorus block in another scene, but have a different setting for it. The X and Y mode enables you to do that. So what you can do is copy the X over to Y. So you can say copy X to Y and then shift to the Y mode. And now you can have a different setting here for this particular scene. Let's say I want the mix high up in this case to be around 57% for this particular chorus at this instance. So, and obviously I want to bypass this reverb as well. Another important thing to note while adding effects in parallel or in general across scenes is that you want to change the bypass mode of the uh, effects that you add in parallel to mute fx in or mute fx out now there are different combinations possible here what you don't want is through what will happen if you have it as through is that if you bypass that block in a different scene the signal chain will still go through and you will have an increase in volume and you will probably have a clean signal chain going through as well which you don't want so change every parallel block to mute fx in what mute fx in does is that when you switch from this scene to another scene uh, the reverb trail or the uh, tail of the reverb will still carry forward in the other scene as well so to give an example uh, let's change the multi delay to mute fx in as well now let's see how this is sounding <laughs> That sounds good. But before I jump it to the other scene and show you the trail of the reverb and the multi delay, what you also need to do is every time you add new blocks, obviously you want to bypass them in the other scenes. So scene one, I don't want the multi delay and reverb as well. So I'm going to bypass those over there. So coming to scene two, you can see that between scene one and scene two, the chorus is switching between the X and Y. So hear the hear this preset out right now. And there you can hear it, the, the tail of the reverb is still kind of present in scene one as well, even though the block is muted out. So mute effects in definitely helps you a lot. And I'll probably create a separate video on different bypass modes as well. You can read about it in the AxeFX2 user manual as well. And as you can see, the chorus also jumped to the X mode, which is what we wanted. Now. That's pretty much scene one and two. Let's go ahead and create scene three as well, which is gonna be a high gain sort of a uh, distortion sort of an amp. Now, the obvious question you have is that, hey GT, the amp is a shiver clean. It's definitely not gonna be capable enough to deliver my high gain tones. That's where the real power of the AxeFX2 comes into picture. You can add a second amp as well over here. Let's jump to scene three first. Now, if you're an AX8 user, I believe you cannot add a second amp, but you can still use the XY mode of the amp, the first amp to actually achieve a different amp as well. Now, when you add the second amp, the first thing you wanna do before you change anything is go back to the previous amp and change the bypass mode to mute. If you keep it to through, what's gonna happen is a clean signal chain will still go through along with the parallel signal chain that you've added for the second amp. So let's go into the second amp. I'm gonna change this to a Friedman HBE and let's dial it in quickly. I also believe I shift the cab to the Y mode because I want a different cab in this case. So let's go to the Y mode and change this to one of my favorite cabs, which is the F073, the 4x12 rectifier cabinet. High cut, I pushed it up to 15K. 15K is not a valid input, so I'll try 15,000. And obviously I don't want the chorus in this high gain block. So this is how it sounds. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sounds pretty nice. That's pretty much how you would do it in a different AMP sort of an implementation if you want to. Now, you need to go back to the other scenes and obviously have that first, second AMP kind of muted out because obviously you don't want uh, that AMP to be present in other scenes. And of course, you want to change the bypass mode to mute as well in all of the different scenes. You do it in one scene, it should carry forward to all different scenes as well. So scene three is basically the AMP is a new one and the cab is a Y mode. Now let's do scene four as well. Now scene four, I want to use a different high gain amp in this case. This is where you can move to the X and Y mode of the amp and actually use uh, a different amp in this case as well. So I'm gonna switch to the Y mode. Uh, I wanna use a use USC 2C++ in this case. I obviously don't want amp one, I'm gonna mute that out. And let's keep the chorus in there, why not? Uh, let's keep the reverb in there but before i go ahead and play anything let's go back to the other blocks and bypass that new delay that we've added we don't need the delay here we don't need the delay here and we don't need the delay here so jumping back to scene four let's hear how it is sounding <laughs> That sounds fair enough. I think it sounds really cool as well. So that's pretty much the four scenes. But another important thing before we actually, you know, conclude this video is the leveling, right? Now, when you have different scenes and you're playing in a live sort of a scenario, you want to ensure that the levels of all the four presets are set accordingly and so that you don't have peaking or you don't have, you know, drop in volumes or too much volume coming through different scenes now there are many ways to do that uh, i like to use my ear you could use some sort of a view meter to actually gauge the levels of your tones uh, of your scenes what i like to do is uh, have the 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 clean tone and the ambient clean tone almost at the same level so this is scene one scene two now I also want the distortion tone to be almost the same volume as the clean tone. So this sounds a little low, so let's increase that a little bit. That sounds close enough. And what I like to do for the lead tone is have a slightly extra volume because you want your solos to cut through the mix and obviously be louder than other, you know, other instruments on the stage because that's your moment to shine, isn't it? So you want it to be louder. So let's hear it. <laughs> Sounds quite loud enough. Let's increase a little bit more, minus uh, 11 maybe. That sounds loud enough. The other way to do this is obviously you can go into the output section as well and go into the scenes uh, subsection in this case and you have different faders for each scene. This is also a very good way to change the level of your scenes uh, easily from this particular section. Just keep in mind that you wanna keep looking out at that clip light on the front of your panel. By the way, everything that we did here is also possible through the front of the panel of the Axe FX2 as well. So you can do it from there, but I find it much more easier to do it from here. 
In conclusion, Scenes is a definitely a better and a more economic and a more seamless way of switching between tones. So if you are playing in a live scenario, I would highly recommend you use Scenes and not use different presets. In my experience, I've been using the Axe 2 pretty much at home, so it doesn't really matter whether I use presets or scenes, but in, in cases where I've had to switch between presets, in between my playing, I've always used scenes because they are much more faster and much more seamless and gapless when it comes to switching between the sounds. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave your thoughts and comments below, and if you're not subscribed, please go ahead and do so. As always, until I see you guys in the next video, make sure you stay safe, guys. Keep rocking. Cheers. Bye-bye.